This is three dog. How can I help? Andy Burkowski here, VGS, here at the Xbox gaming event in a nightclub for some reason, and we are here talking about Sunset Overdrive. Who are we talking to today? Uh, my name is Marcus Smith. I'm the creative director on this game. First off, what is the most interesting and offensive series of vulgarities that is spewed in this game? Because I have heard from my time yeah, some yeah, yeah. beautiful use okay. of profanity. Man, I really, love it. That's a really tough yeah. question. Or uh, your favorite. You know, what is my favorite? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a part where somebody comes up with a plan that they want to take on and they want to go attack some guys without guns and, and the player has this very perfect delivery that I will only mangle. All right. But they're basically saying, that is a very terrible fucking idea. <laughs> and it just hits it so well. It the just, actors who do it, moment. Just, it hits the moment perfectly. Mm. Of course, you know, sorry. They found I, all the colors. They found all the right. colors. That's right. They found all they the found colors. They found all the colors, which is important. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking of colors, Sunset Overdrive. Yes. Colorful. Gorgeous, beautiful. I've never seen so much orange in my life. <laughs> Where did this concept come from? Well, we want, you guys have made, you know, we did some, beautiful yeah, right, some beautiful exactly. grays, some beautiful gray, dark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's now, kind of how it how it came about. Was yeah. we had been working on these, you know, uh, resistance is kind of this post-apocalyptic yeah. in a different type of world, uh, and and the thought of going and doing that again was kind of a little, yeah. you know. This franchise could go on for 10 years. Do you really want to be in that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that doldrum? So we said we want to do an end times that's more like a new beginning. Mm. And so with the core premise of fun in the end times, yeah. we kind of built everything from there. So you want to build a world that's fun and inviting and vibrant and people want to be there. So they're not constantly like, okay, let me get back in there. <laughs> Gotta, you know? oh. like, I'm a lot of dead babies up. this time. Yeah, yeah exactly. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, like, I'm going to, to watch Schindler's List. I know what I'm getting into. I got to kind of like brace myself for it. <laughs> So Sunset Overdrive is not Schindler's List. It's the anti-Schindler's yeah. List, yeah, so basically. Sunset Overdrive, anti-Schindler's List. Yeah. Not going to be a box quote, probably. Well, you might put it on the it box. It might be, think, all right. At this point, yeah. So, again, tell us the soft pitch, the okay. two-line pitch of Sunset Overdrive. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of the story, because right, it makes a lot go. more sense. So there's a giant multinational corporation called Fizco. Mm -hmm. They're about to launch a hot new energy drink, Overcharge. Yeah. They have a pre-release party in their hometown city of Sunset City. You are working there, you as the player. Yeah. You can be anybody who you want to be. This is a little side note. Uh, but you're working there. Everybody else who drinks it turns into mutants. Mm -hmm. Turns out they brute force their way through FDA testing, a few side effects. So now you find yourself in Sunset City, yeah. uh, one of the few survivors, surrounded by these horrific mutants. But after a while you realize you don't have a boss anymore, you don't have bills <laughs> to pay, you pay your, play your music as loud as you want, you know, you all of these sort of fan, uh, video game fantasies come to life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We turn you loose on a city that's pretty much made for your abilities yeah. that are completely not based on reality. Uh, you can <laughs> Bouncing wall run on forever. cars, yeah. Bouncing, Bouncing on cars, cars yeah. Sure. I highly recommend people go yeah. try that. Give it a try. I've heard police cars in particular are very bouncy, <laughs> so please. That is an endorsement <laughs> from the creator of Sunset Overdrive to jump on a police car. Sure. I love, what and again, possibly yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. I love the concept of really breaking down that fourth wall yeah. in Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, yeah. Right off the bat, like you're introduced to the game. At one point, yeah. the main character that I customized as an abomination, obscene, yeah, thing yeah, I yeah. did to her, <laughs> yeah, was playing Sunset Overdrive. Yes. On So what yeah. are some other instances of that kind of tonal change where you wanted to make sure that you're looking at the camera, you're talking to the player. Yeah, well, you sometimes, sometimes we literally do that. There's yeah. a very magnum PI moment where mm -hmm. the player turns to the camera and says, how convenient. <laughs> uh, you know, things like that yeah. where we're constantly just r reminding you. There's The player will often say things like, if I was playing a video game, I'd do it like this, and yeah. then we have them do it like that. <laughs> you know, th there's lots of those, those little references. I'd say that we were kind of influenced in a strange way by uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world, really? yeah. Rayford, which is great because, of course, it's uh, from Toronto, where yeah. we are. Yes, indeed. And uh, and it was a comic that was influenced by video games, which mm -hmm. was made into a movie, <laughs> which we uh, as a video game have yeah, come full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think a lot of the fourth wall breaking elements come from that that sort of uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim esque mm -hmm. uh, take on the world. Sticking with that tone of yeah. having fun in the new beginning, yeah. how have you adopted that in terms of the weapons? The Somnia, they make the most insane weapons. Sure. It's what you guys are known for. Yeah. 
what do we have in Sunset Overdrive? We have a lot of different. It's weapons. hard to even explain, like just by the <laughs> really titles. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have uh, TN Teddy shoots uh, teddy bear strapped with dynamite. We have an acid sprinkler, which is a, like a, a children's lawn sprinkler. Yeah. You know, the, the hair goes crazy, but acid shoots out. Uh, we have. It's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, don't do that at home. You bounce on cop cars, yes, but uh, we have Captain Ahab that is like a harpoon type gun, but it's, it uses overcharge, so yeah. it brings all the the mutants after it because they're still addicted to the stuff. Uh, we have this like wide variety of arsenal, all of them upgrade. Plus, we have amps that are like a, a progression system yeah. that you can craft that you can apply to the weapon. So, to answer your question. It's all crazy. Uh, <laughs> the base weapons are built by a madman in the game that yeah. you, you can buy, uh, and then you can modify them to, to do crazier and crazier things. In that world yeah. that we're living in, what can we experience? Like, how dense is the world? Where can we go? Is it big and open? Are we doing mission-based? Yeah. What are we dealing with? So it's a big open world. You start off, in, in the beginning, you can go anywhere. Yeah. The certain areas are going to be more dangerous. Uh, we've got three different enemy types. We've got the mutants, of which there's a lot of variety. We have humans, of which there's a few different types. And then we have uh, physical robots that are like the security sentry force. Everywhere in the city, you'll be encountering those guys skirmishing with one another. You'll have dynamic events that are yeah. happening. But then we also have a uh, linear single-player campaign. There is a story that goes along with all this madness. Uh, and then you can you can grind up your character by doing a lot of yeah. really innovative quests. Those are a lot less sort of rule-based. What's an example of an innovative quest? Because I know you leaned into that a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. let's so let's hear that. Is. I think some of the quests have, have have taken the idea that we can we can be kind of irreverent and goofy. And yeah. kind of there's one of my favorites is actually. Um, there's a fizzy. He's a mascot. The yeah, corporate yeah. mascot, right? He's all around here. We've, He's seen, all around we've here. seen him all around we, here. Uh, we showed earlier there's a point where you actually fight him. There's a giant mm. like Macy's Day balloon. And uh, one of the quests is you need to take his AI core around and try to get it de decoded. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Hysterical. The yeah. writing, uh, our, one of our designers, Eric Meyer, did that, and it's hysterical, and it's mm. amazing. So uh, lots, of, lots of different things that you do on the side that are... Uh, just a little strange. Yeah. You know. Sticking with that irreverent tone, what about yeah. collectibles? What do we got? We have a lot of different collectibles. Actually, we have a, a wide variety of collectibles that are useful in the economy. So oh, the amps excellent. that I was yes. talking about, uh, you can collect. Some of those collectibles are parts that you use to craft those. Uh, we have things like fizzy balloons. We have uh, toilet paper that, that people have, have put around the world and uh, uh, like TPing. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, overcharged signs. We have all these things that they have useful elements that you can then bring in to the... It's good seeing you again, sir. Hey there. Um, <laughs> and so, so uh, you know, lots of things that you can do and collect in the world, mm -hmm. but they're actually useful as well, not just like, one of 200, yay, <laughs> good for you. Well, that's always the greatest thing, when you actually have things that fit with the tone of the world yeah. and are useful, like you said. You yeah. can actually use them to have fun. Yeah. Sticking with the idea of just... I love getting into this game and seeing how much is actually happening on screen. Yeah. It's yeah. almost when you first start a little overwhelming. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Well, speak to that a little bit. What exactly will happen? Like, if you're in a firefight, yeah. what can you typically see on the screen? And why did you guys, I guess, make that choice to be so bombastic and explosive with everything? So, I think the main thing. Is, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. Wow. Bang. Yeah. Uh, I, the main thing is, this isn't a typical shooter. You're not hiding behind cover. So the beginning of the game actually starts out pretty slow to kind of ease you into that idea. It's really hard to break people of that idea of shooting down iron sights, standing still, yeah. ducking behind cover. So this is a game about getting you up onto traversal elements, grinding, undergrinding, shooting, bouncing, you know, all those sorts of things. Once you start doing that, you're super powerful, especially as you start building your amps up and everything. So one of the reasons that we wanted to have so much happening at any given time is just you need to have a lot to fight against. Yeah. Um, it's momentum based, so the crazier things get, the more you're unlocking amps now, there's even more crazy stuff. Yeah, one of your amps may be a Chance of Thunder that has thunder clouds everywhere, oh, wow. shooting lightning down on your enemies. Uh, it really does become so like as a it gets crazier, game. as yeah. the combat gets more frenetic, yep. more stuff is going to be dropped in the sky. Wow. Right, exactly. So it gets it builds up, and you really do feel like kind of a god in this arena yeah. of running around and doing it. So that's why we needed a lot in the environment. Yeah. But also, just this is a next gen game. We want it to be not a sterile world, oh. and we've created it's this definitely world. Not sterile. Yeah, <laughs> we've created this world where everybody is basically dead or turned into a mutant. Yeah. Uh, but now we have these, again, those three different factions fighting against each other, and then we have NPC-friendly factions in there as well. 
So we just wanted the world to feel alive, even though there's been this awful calamity. What do you do to kind of combat against the idea of fatigue in a game yeah. that is so you know, visceral, high velocity. Like you said, it gets yeah. crazier, crazier. What are you doing to make sure that first time it happens to me as a player yeah. is just as exciting as, you know, 10, 20 hours in when it's happening again? I think the main thing is variety. We have yeah. a lot of, in the missions, we have, you know, every time we said to a mission designer, make surprise us. We don't yeah. want to see the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, you might be fighting a, a giant Macy Stay float in one mission. You might have to take out a guy on a roller coaster in another mission. Yeah. Um, and then we we just we have a lot of things that you need to do. So it's not going to be constantly fighting the same group of enemies. We'll have different enemies that come out and they do different things. Now there's high priority targets. Different environment means different spatial awareness, and and so it really is everywhere you go. It feels a little different, yeah. it, it, and and it comes it comes to play differently. Of course, there's multiplayer yeah. as there always is. What is the Sunset Overdrive multiplayer experience like? So the multiplayer experience in Sunset Overdrive is called Chaos Squad. Yeah. It's eight players. It's a cooperative mode that has some competitive elements, but basically you're in the open world together. You take on uh, different challenges. There's different objectives that come up, and then in between each objective, you as a team need to vote on okay. which new objective to take on. Mm -hmm. And that's because there are certain aspects to each uh, uh, objective that will either benefit you in making it a little bit easier in the end section, or will increase the amount of rewards. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. it's super hard, but great reward, <laughs> yeah. or a little bit easier and less chance of reward. So you do all these objectives, and it culminates in a night defense, which is a, a big defense of your base. You're having to keep all your overcharge from these hordes yeah. of enemies. And you all have to work together using traps, using your weapons, mm -hmm. traversal. Yeah, and, played again, a lot of that here chaos. today, and it was insane it and, was that, and that's crazy. just like the smallest yeah. section like mm -hmm. i really want people to play the whole thing to just get a better idea of how a session would go yeah. where you're doing these different objectives in the world mm -hmm. so it's not like we're just doing night defense over <laughs> and over again well what is uh in the single player at least yeah. an instance or a moment in this game that for you is your favorite that you can talk about that i can talk about yeah oh man are there a lot of your favorites that you can't there are, talk about? There are a lot. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like it's not, it's not like you're putting me on the spot. They're no, like, no, no, like, yeah. What did we talk about? There's one mission early on. I don't think we've shown it. Maybe exclusive. Maybe I'm not supposed to talk about it. But there's a point where you get trapped, and it's a pretty crazy fight and everything. But it's looking pretty hopeless. There's streaming in, and uh, you and uh, NPC commandeer a train, and just haul ass through the city, <laughs> destroying everything. Really? And there's just a great feeling of like. I had to fight really hard. I had to do a lot of things to get to that point, and now I can just sit back and let the train do <laughs> now, the and action. Because literally, you were hijacking a train. Literally hijacking wow. a train. Yeah. Okay. So that—that's the type of thing where it's just like a designer put that in, and it yeah. was like, "That's beautiful." I don't know how we'll ever get it in frame, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> and we did, and it's great. So there you go. <laughs> so overall, what do you hope? You know, players—they're sitting down, they're excited for it. Yeah. After they're done, the game, obviously. What do you think? What do you want them to take away from this experience? Uh, I think that I, th I would like people to think about games, especially console games, in a new light. Like, they don't mm -hmm. all have to be the same yeah. genre. And, and I, I'd like people to start thinking outside of the box. I mean, I'm not, I certainly love a certain type of game mm -hmm. that we are the opposite of. Yeah. You know, like, uh, Last of Us is a great, great game. Mm -hmm. Not every game needs to be Last of Us, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Call of Duty, same thing. Great, great game. Not everybody has to be mm. Call of Duty. I just, I love the era that we live in now where we have all these different consoles. We have handhelds. Yeah, we yeah. have PCs are viable. Like all these different platforms that you can play games on. And there's so much opportunity for us to expand on things, do different types of gameplay and, and really just find more. I want, the, I want the indie film of games, like indie <laughs> games to come up. So that's what and, I want. And here we have it. When can we play it? Uh, October 28th comes out in North America. So. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you, you taking the time. Make sure you check it out. Again, an endorsement to jump on a police car. Yep. Boston not Insomniac. Acid and a sprinkler. Not Don't ass in the sprinkler. That'll get you hurt, kids. Andy Burkowski, VGS.